Yeah, we back. We back. Now today, man, we got a funny topic. We got white folks in South Africa fighting for their independence. I'm not even kidding, man. We got white folks in South Africa in 2024 fighting for their independence. I'm so serious. Now, over the past week, I didn't drop at least two or three videos on South Africa, mainly talking about them going to the International Criminal Courts of Justice to advocate on behalf of the Palestinians. Meanwhile, we got white folks in South Africa fighting for their independence. Now, take a look up on the screen. Cape Independence is a political movement that seeks the independence of the Western Cape province and the Eastern and Northern Cape provinces from South Africa. Now, if you take a look up on the screen, this is a gentleman by the name of Phil Craig. He is the leader of a political party named the Referendum Party, which is a single issue political party that is seeking the independence from the Cape from South Africa. And as you can see by his caption, he said, I'm fighting for Cape independence because I love these people, not because I hate you. So, I, matter of fact, I'll save my commentary for later. Let's jump into this article. Take a look up on the screen. I have lived in South Africa for more than 20 years. I was not born here. I chose to become South African. I love this incredible country and its people, and I have never for one single day regretted that choice. Over the past few years, one thing has frustrated Phil above all else. Our beautiful country is falling apart around us, and yet we don't seem to have the courage to say enough. The more Phil thought about this, the more he knew something had to be done. Today, if someone asked him, how can a white man with the British accent lead a movement that advocates for Cape independence? He answers without skipping a beat. I'm doing it because you did not now. Wow. Wow. It's crazy. But anyways, let's take a look at some of the reactions on social media. This person said black supremacist days are numbered. We are taking back what is ours. Hashtag free to Cape. And I guess this is the uh, the flag of the uh, this uh, independent nation that they're trying to establish. Uh, it's an ugly ass flag. I ain't gonna lie, this shit trash. But anyway, let's continue. This person said, "You're literally a foreigner in Africa, one in the country for white people in Africa." This person said, first it starts with Cape independence. Then all of a sudden, there's an influx of a certain demographic. Suddenly, areas become prohibited to the general population, and then." I'm sure we all know how this will end up. This person said, I will fight for the independence of East London, henceforth. This person said, an immigrant moving to a different country and then starting a secessionist movement in said country is actually insane. If he doesn't like living in South Africa, he can always move back to his own country. I'm praying that he gets deported soon. Now, listen, the modern day black man, I don't know what's up with the modern day black man, but the black man from the 19th century, the black man from the 18th century, the black man from the 17th century, bro, listen, it wouldn't even be a discussion, but it wouldn't even be, we'd be mobilizing the troops right now. It would be mobilizing the forces. The whole Cape will be surrounded. If it was the ancient times, the black man from the ancient times, I don't know what the fuck is up with the black man in the modern day, but the black man from 1824, the black man from 1777, listen, the whole Cape would be surrounded right now. The whole Cape would be surrounded right now. That whole movement will be dead on arrival. Now let's continue. This person said, it started like this in Gaza and look where it is today. This person said, the saddest part about this is that it is gaining momentum at the same time when as South Africans, we should be preoccupied with freeing Palestine from the claws. <laughs> Nigga, the white man taking your shit. You, you worry about the fucking Arab all the way across the street. Niggas is dumb, bro. Let's continue. Nah, that shit got me tight. That shit got me tight. You know why that shit got me tight? It's because the same way the British and the Dutch came through on the Cape 400 years ago and colonized and settled on the Cape is the same way the Arabs came through and invaded the northern coast of Africa, right? So I don't understand this dude, this black man, the white man in South Africa talking about, we trying to take this shit and you talking about, we should be worried about the Palestinians, bro. Man, listen, bro. Y'all be overdosing on this morality, this humanity bullshit, bro. Listen, life is not about none of that shit, bro. Life is about power. Meaning that if I have the power to take your shit, then I'm taking your shit. And that's it. Now let's continue. This person said, go back to Europe. This is Africa. We fought for independence. And frankly, y'all got off easy. That's a fact. That's a fact. The white man in South Africa, he got off easy. To be honest, the majority of European invaders, they got off easy, man. Because the French in the modern day, the French can still come to Africa, vacation in Africa, smash black women in Africa start businesses in africa get money in africa the british can still come to come to africa 
start businesses in Africa, get money in Africa, smash black women in Africa. The Dutch, same thing. The Germans, the same thing. The Italians, the same thing. It doesn't matter what country the white man is from. He can come to Africa with no fear. And that's part of the reason why the whites are so audacious, especially with this whole Cape independence movement, because it's the law of nature, bro. It's the law of the jungle. When you allow yourself to be disrespected, right? I mean, people gonna disrespect you. Like I told you before, our forefathers would have never accepted none of this shit. If it was the year 1789, and you had Dutch and British settlers on the Cape talking about, we trying to take this shit. Bro, the forces would be mobilized. The troops would be ready for war. Listen, it's time It's time to grab the fucking, it's time to grab the spear, the machetes, the sabers. That's what it would have been. The black man from centuries ago, oh man, he wasn't going for that shit. He wasn't going for none of that shit. He was, listen, the black man in the ancient times, he knew life is about power. Life is about protecting my sovereignty. Life is about maintaining the integrity of my national territory. That's what the ancient black man understood. Now, when it comes to the modern day black man, I don't know what he understands. I don't understand the modern day black man, but the ancient black man, he understood what life was about. Now, let's continue. This person said, I urge Africans to beware with climate change and capitalism making the West unlivable. This is going to be a thing. It's the Cape in South Africa. It's Malindi in Kenya. Yup, listen. The Europeans are going to establish the little enclaves throughout the continent because, like I said, they feel comfortable enough to move around the continent with no fear because the black man thinks that we're supposed to be one happy family, the human family holding hands together. But as you can see, other groups do not abide by that doctrine. They do not follow that doctrine. No, they do what's best for them. They do what's best for their children. In fact, the guy even told you in the caption, he said, I'm fighting for Cape independence because I love these people, my people, not because I hate you. And to be honest, that's really what it's all about. I feel the same exact way. I love my people. I don't really give a fuck about you. I don't really care about you. Nothing against you, but I love my people. I love my brothers. I love my women. I love my elders. I love the babies. You know what I mean? I love my folks. I love my people. That's what it's about. I don't got time to worry about them other people. They supposed to be worried about their own people. I'm worried about my people. That's what it's about. That's the proper orientation of a man. A man who is here to establish and maintain power. A man who is here to be the king of his territory. A man who is here to win. That is the mindset of a man. Nothing against you. I'm just worried about me. Now let's continue. This person said, can you imagine if black Americans in America South with 300 year history in the region just decided they wanted Georgia independence? Do you know what the government and the feds would ensure happens to the leaders of this movement? Let me tell you what would happen. Number one, they'd have you wiretapped. Number one, they'd have you infiltrated. Number one, you'd be dead in less than a year. You'd be dead in less than a year. If not dead, then you'd be under the jail for good. For good. Because they understand life is about power, not morality. So due to the fact that you are now standing as an adversary to my interest, I must vanquish you. I must eliminate you. I must destroy you. And once you are effectively destroyed, I must ensure that you never come back from the dead ever again. That is the mentality of a man. Now let's continue. This person said, the fact that they're breeding more racist and these are possibly the kids that are gonna terrorize our children. Well, if they're breeding, as you say, racist, then you should be breeding revolutionaries to counter what they have planned for your children. You should be breeding children that can effectively counter whatever is placed in front of them, right? So if you are properly socializing your children and giving them the proper political education, you wouldn't have to be worried about how other people are raising their children because you would already be giving your children the tools necessary to succeed and maintain whatever you pass down to them. Now let's continue. This person said, a white ethno state within Africa is crazy. Imagine the reactions to a black ethno state within Europe. This person said, they start by breaking off a piece, then another piece, then they want the whole pie. Ask the Palestinians, how that got where they oh my god okay brother okay brother okay let's uh let's move on this person said this is what happens when you allow thieves to keep their loot they garner the courage to come back for more and for everything now let's continue this person said when will we arrest the settlers for plotting against the republic exactly that is the mentality of our forefathers i'm telling you if it was the year 1744 and some random white dudes on the coast talk about, hey, we trying to take this shit. Listen, the African kings of the ancient times, they would've been like, mobilize the troops, man. Mobilize the troops. Make sure, make sure not a single one of them remain. That is what, that's what would've happened centuries ago. Now in the modern day, I don't know, man. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. But in the ancient times, it was a different black man back in the day. Now let's continue. Now I wanna go in greater detail about what I mean when I say the black man of the ancient times, he would've never 
accepted this uh this rubbish you know this garbage uh from nobody you know what i mean the difference between the black man of the modern day and the black man of ancient times see the black man of the modern day he's hostile against other black men you know he'll bring that energy against other black men like for example the south africans they're gonna bring that smoke to the nigerians and the zimbabweans and shit like that but when it comes to the white settlers the british and the dutch settlers it's all peace and friendship you know it's all camaraderie we don't want no beef we don't got no beef but when it came to the ancient black man one thing you could say yes the ancient black man yes he engaged in tribalism he engaged in military warfare against other black men but the difference is he was also equally as aggressive against all groups of foreigners right when you take a look at history especially the history of south africa the coastal wars that was a hundred year war of the black man in south africa going to war in the cape the same exact cape where the white man is trying to establish independence today the black man in south africa went to war for a hundred years defending the cape and we don't even got to talk about the zulus on multiple occasions the zulus obliterated the europeans on a battlefield they obliterated whole families whole settlements the zulus went crazy against the european settlers back in them days man destroyed them left so many bodies in their wake because the black man in the ancient times he understood listen life is about power not morality i gotta defend my people to the death i gotta defend my interests to the death even if i got nothing in my hand but a damn spear i'm gonna die on the battlefield defending the honor of my national territory and the memory of my ancestors that was the mentality of the black man in ancient times and there are still a small fraction of us that still carry that energy today a small fraction we're like an endangered species they're trying to get rid of us but we still here you know some of us are still here you know which they try to wipe us out though but we still here you know what i'm saying but anyways man listen brothers listen hey brothers in south africa don't let them don't let them get the cape man don't let, don't do not let them get the cape anything you do do not let them get the cape that would be a monumental embarrassment for black men of epic proportions that we would not be able to come back from do not let white men establish a nation on the continent do not let white listen we don't let the arabs establish like 10 nations on the continent we cannot let the white man come through and start establishing nations fuck that now let's continue man we out man it's your boy never card that's Celine back in the bill of yes and d cash app up on the screen and i'm gone peace reincarnated i'm back in the original fashion i left on a horse and came back in the ass and i left with abundance and came back to famine we used to be pyramids now we be rapping look how the mighty have fallen used to be running now we be walking when you be cooning that's when they applauded selling your soul your sons and your daughter gotta come up in this shit they stuck in the mix really my heart it be breaking that's why i'm stacking that paper and handle my business pass it down in generation talking about money and power and building a nation that's a deadly combination never be watching the tv they pushing the genders falsifying information know they got malice intentions step in the room and i'm feeling the tension enemy watching me blocking my vision there for the check cause i need my redemption building my kingdom i need to protect it ready for war like a young money congo never decided the team is the motto up in the crib and i'm whipping up waffles up in the crib and i'm smoking gelato i'm chilling i'm taking my pain and make it ambition i'm blessed by the gods but i ain't religious i came for the power they came for the bitch they making no hourly wage i got business this shit is an art and they can never be taught selling my soul i can never be bought play with my money i see you ain't caught run to the check and i do it for sport babylon falling i go to the source packing my luggage and go overseas shorty be with me and she so at least shorty be chugged and i'm calling her hershey secret intelligence probably gonna murder me don't fuck with brands cause nigga i'm haitian say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces